Hello and welcome back to the OTB channel, Old Tech Bloke, which is me. For those of you who have been following uh, the videos that I've produced so far, I've looked at a timeline of how I set up uh, my hardware and software to actually record videos for YouTube, which has been a learning experience in its own right. But from this point on, I want the channel to be more Linuxy. That's probably a good way of describing it. And I thought, well, if we're going to talk Linux and we're going to go back to the beginning, why not start with the oldest surviving distribution, Slackware. Now, Slackware is not for everyone. It does not do everything for you automatically. And for a brand new user, I probably wouldn't recommend it. In fact, I started using Slackware probably about six months in to uh, my discovering Linux. And I would suggest people get comfortable with the Linux system generally before they move on to look at Slackware. However, I've been using Linux now since 2004, so getting on 15 years. And uh, initially I went through the stando, standard distro hopping stage. Uh, at the time I tried the likes of SUSE, Mandrake, um, Zandros. Does anybody remember Zandros? I actually paid for that one and it was a, abominable. Um, and uh, I have to say that back in 2004, Linux hurt. It took a lot of learning. Things, simple things that we take for granted now, like automatically mounting uh, a USB stick just didn't happen in most distros. And wireless networking, well, it was a dark art and it took a lot of fiddling. Nevertheless, uh, I stuck with it. And I have to say that, logically, I probably should have abandoned Linux back in 2004 because it, it wasn't ready for your average user. But I'm the sort of person that hates to be beaten and I persevered, and I became uh, a member of uh, the local lug in Coventry, um, and I got together with other like-minded people, and the uh, leader of the lug, uh, who also happens to be the maintainer of uh, the slackword.uk slack word um, mirror, uh, persuaded me to start using Slackware. And so I installed it on uh, a spare partition, in those days, I was multi-booting and using as many distros as I possibly could to try and figure out which one I liked. And I was surprised at how easy it was to install, although it does demand more from you than most other distros these days. You will need to take uh, a little bit more responsibility in terms of what upgrades you install and what packages you install. Slackware does not automatically resolve dependencies. That, strangely enough, is less of a problem than it might seem at the beginning, because there are various tools to help you work your way around that. Um, and you'll have to learn how to use command line editors such as Nano and VI or Vim. Not in any complex way, but just for basic editing. Now, I've said this in one of my videos at the beginning. I am not a developer. I am not a Linux evangelist. I am a Linux desktop user. And back in 2004, 2005, I think it was, when I first came to Slackware, uh, I knew very little about the system. But I managed to get it up and running. And I think it was Dropline GNOME that I installed as well, because I, I'd fallen in love with the... Uh, Gnome 2 des desktop at that point. And I have to say that since 2004, although Slackware is not the system I use every day, especially if I want a system where I'm installing and uninstalling different programs all the time, it's solid, it's dependable, and it's never broken on me. 
and I can't say that of any other system. In fact, I still have a stable version of Slackware 14.2 running on my uh, ThinkPad T430. I spend a lot of my time on the road, and that's the machine that goes with me when I'm staying over in hotels. I don't want to be messing about. It just works. I never have a problem with it. So what this video is about is something a little bit different. The Slackware install is old school, but it's not difficult. What is out there at the moment, though, to make life even easier is there is a Slackware Live CD that actually helps you install it to hard disk, should you so wish. I haven't really explored this in any detail, so I thought, well, why not ask you to join me and we'll have a look at what the Slackware Live CD is and obviously the Mate version because that is my chosen desktop from all the way back in 2004-2005 when I fell in love with GNOME 2 Mate is the nearest to it so let's have a look at Slackware in a bit more detail then fire a version up in VirtualBox and go through the process So what's Slackware? Well, it's one of the, uh, in fact, I think it's the earliest Linux distribution which is still maintained. It was the creation of the person who's still its lead developer, Patrick Volkerding. I hope I've uh, pronounced that right, Pat, um, who uh, has dictated exactly how Slackware develops and as far as Pat's concerned there hasn't been a reason so far to include newer develop developments such as System D in the distro. Many people will be very pleased about that, others not so much, however this is Pat's baby and Slackware is what Pat wants it to be. And so far, that's worked out pretty well for him in over two decades. There's not just him, of course, though. We have other important people involved in Slackware. Um, the guy who seems to be behind Slackware Live is a chap, and another one who has a name I'm going to find difficult to pronounce, Eric Hamaliers, uh, otherwise known as Alien Bob, um, who maintains and writes the wiki, um, He's also behind uh, the project to uh, add multi-lib uh, functionality to Slackware, as well as the Slackware Live um, distribution. So, Slackware itself, when does it get released? How often uh, are stable distributions in the mix before they're replaced? Well, it's not like Ubuntu. The last distribution of Slackware was all the way back in July 2016. I think most of us are hoping there will be a new stable release this year, but ultimately it's ready when it's ready. Pat does not stick to a definite time frame. It's ready when it's ready. It's as simple as that, which is pretty good if you want a stable, robust system. Now, in terms of Slackware Live, as I said, Alien Bob has been the person behind that, and it comes in a few versions. You can actually have the straightforward Slackware version, or as you can see here, a slimmed down XFCE version, um, one with Plasma 5 in instead of KDE 4, a Mate variant, which is the one I've downloaded, a cinnamon flavour, and I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this, a Glackware variant, which is GNOME 3 plus PAM plus System D. And I hesitate to say this, but these are not official Slackware variants. These are all provided by third-party repositories, which Alien Bob has integrated into the Slackware Live CD. There's also a Studioware version that looks quite interesting, uh, which contains lots of audio, video, and photo editing, editing software. Okay, so that's Slackware. 
Where do you get Slackware Live? Well, you can actually download it from many of the mirrors. The mirror that I use is the Slackware UK mirror. And if you go to the people directory, you'll see an entry there for Slackware Live. And all the various ISO files are there, as you can see. I downloaded the Slackware Live Marte current ISO and I'm going to launch it now in VirtualBox. So let's see what it's all about. Right, so you can see VirtualBox on the screen and an entry called Slackware Live. I've attached the Slackware Live ISO to the virtual machine I've given it 8 gig of my 16 gig of RAM and I've created a virtual hard drive of just over 40 gig. So let's start it and see what happens. I've played with it once before and set it in uh, into full screen mode. So we see a nice graphical boot menu with Start Marte Live or non-US keyboard selection. Well, I'm going to go into that to start off with, and I'm going to set a British keyboard. I'll then start the ISO. And as normal, with Slackware, it doesn't attempt to hide the boot messages. The, this used to worry me when I first started Linux. I liked uh, a nice um, graphical bootloader, but to be honest, as a... Uh, as the years have gone by, I prefer to see exactly what's going on as the system boots. And there we have it, quite fast. And it's booted into a graphical login manager. There are two users on this system and we can choose to log into either. One is root and the password is root. Or a normal user is called live on the system and the password is live. So let's use the live user and log in with the password live. And there we have it. All the glory of Marte, but on Slackware. Not scaled as yet. However, that could simply be because I need to uh, make some settings in the control panel, as I believe the guest editions are installed uh, by default. So let's go into displays. Let me change the resolution to 1680 by 1050, which is what this screen is. Hit apply, keep the configuration, and there we go. We can now see what we're doing. So it looks pretty much like a vanilla installation of Marte. And in fact, that's what you tend to get with Slackware. Slackware does not mess around with the packages or customize them in any way. You get them in the way that the developer had intended. That doesn't stop you going into various packages and uh, desktop environments and customizing it to your own liking, but you start from uh, a very plain baseline, which is a good thing. What have we got here? Well, we've got a few accessories screenshot, Joe's own editor, uh, HP device manager for HP printers, and uh, a calculator. There's a few games. You've got the GIMP there already, an XPDF. Firefox installed by default, as well as Thunderbird. Not that many uh, Office programs, but you have at least got a, a PDF document viewer there. And you have the likes of Emacs, Glade, QT4, things that are going to be of more interest to a developer, which, as I've said, I'm most definitely not. On the sound, sound and video side, okay, you have Audacious, Mplayer, XMMMS, and Zine. Fine, enough to get you started. And if we look at system tools, we have our terminals, and I see we also have Gparted installed by default. Now let me open a terminal before I go any further. 
The point of this video is to show you how to install the Slackware Live system to your hard drive. And the first job that you need to do, if you intend to do that, is you need to format the hard drive, the virtual hard drive. So let me just switch over to root. And strangely enough, rather than typing root's password, you're asked to uh, type your user password. But that's okay, we now have a root prompt. And in order to see what my hard drive on this virtual uh, system is designated as, I'm going to launch fdisk-l. I would imagine it's going to be SDA, but let me just scroll up and see. There's a lot of loop devices there, probably due to the uh, squash uh, file system on the live disk. But there it is, dev SDA. Okay, great. So I now need to format that. And there's a couple of ways that I can do this. I can use Gparted, which is already installed on the system, or I can simply use CFDisk. For this example, I'm going to use CFDisk. Now it's a raw disk, it hasn't got a partition table yet, so when I launch uh, CFDisk, it asks me what kind of partition table I want. I'm going to stick with plain DOS and an MBR system on this virtual machine, so I simply pick DOS. I'm then going to create, first of all, a swap partition. Um, what size do I want that to be? I don't need a great deal, so let's just say 4 gig. I'll make it a primary partition. The type, Linux swap. Oops, let's write that. Okay, am I sure? Yes, I am. Great. I'm getting, do you want to write the petition to disk again? Uh, no. What I want to do now is I want to use the free space to create another partition. And we'll use the remainder of the disk, which apparently is 39.4 gig. I'll keep it as a primary partition. I'll set it as Linux and I'll give it a bootable flag. And I'll write that. Do I want to write it to disk? Yes. Great. Let's quit from there. Right, the next stage is to install. And this Slackware Live uh, CD, ISO, image, whatever you want to call it, has a whole range of scripts inside it. If I type setup and then the tab, you'll see that it comes up with a command setup to hard drive or setup to HD. I'm just going to run this. And it immediately brings up a curses interface, which asks me what I want to do. I'm not going to remap my keyboard. I'm going to go straight into set up your swap partition. It's spotted that there's a swap partition on SDA1, so OK. It will now prepare my system. Would I like to check for bad blocks while uh, running make swap? No, I don't think I'm going to on this. Great, that's been added to the system. I now need to select the list to, loop, to use... Uh, a partition for the root partition. It's already spotted the only other partition on the system, which is dev SDA2. So I'm going to select that, format it quickly with no bad block checking. Yeah, absolutely. And do I want to use ext3 or ext4? Let's go with ext4. It's now been added to the system. So we just let it calculate disk usage and it will soon allow us to continue. So OK, it knows what the available space is, uh, about 37 gig, just under. 
and it requires around 9 gig so it looks like we're good to go and it will now process the various live modules that I'm running and install them to that virtual hard drive this does take quite a while but it doesn't require any interaction so what I'm going to do is pause this recording and come back to it when we get to the next stage so Slackware Live has now finished copying uh, the various modules onto the virtual hard drive. It took about an hour. So it's not a quick process and I'm assuming that's because it takes quite a while to unsquash running live modules. Is that even a word? But uh, hey, it takes a while. But as I said before, no interactions required. So go get a cup of coffee, read the paper, watch the telly while it's doing it and come back when it's done its thing. And it takes us to here. Post install hints and tips. All we have to do at this stage is more or less click the defaults and follow along. So I'm just letting it do its own thing now. And you can see it's going through various stages, many of which mirror what you'll see on the standard Slackware install if you are not using the live CD. Do I want to make a USB Linux boot stick? No, I don't at this stage, thank you. I'd like to install Lilo as well, which, unlike many distributions which now use Grub2, uh, Slackware has stuck to the Lilo bootloader and I, I generally install it as opposed to Grub uh, which you can also install simply because it's proved to be fairly robust. So install it to the master boot record exactly that's what I wanted to do and as you can see it's getting on with the job. Do I want to load the GPM program which allows me to cut and paste text on the virtual console? Why not? Would I like to configure the network? Yes, I would. Enter the host name. Let's call this Test Slack. Enter a domain name. Well, I haven't actually got one, so I'll just stick with the example.org that's up there. How do I want to configure my network? Well, I want to use Network Manager, so I'll make sure that I select that and confirm it. I'm then asked about services that I would like to be started at boot time. I'm going to go with the defaults. I can always start services from the uh, install system, so it's just easier. Would I like to try out some custom screen fonts? No, thank you. I want to set my hardware clock to local time, OK, and I need to set my locale. This takes a, a little while because there are so many different locales, but what I want is the Europe forward slash London variant, which we'll get to it shortly. There we are, we're in Europe, London. I'm now asked what window manager I want to use. All the standard window managers are options here. XFCE, Fluxbox, Blackbox, Window Maker, FVWM2 and TWM. But I want the last one. The Mate session or Mate session, should I say. It then prompts me to create a password for root. So I'll do that now. And that is it. You'll notice at this point there is no normal user created. I have simply created a password for the root user. But we can deal with that when we launch uh, the install system. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut this down. I'm going to remove the ISO file from VirtualBox. And I'm going to boot into the installed uh, Marte Slackware system. So I shut down the system. I've uh, unhooked the ISO file 
from uh, VirtualBox and I'm about to reboot for the first time. Let's see what happens. There we go. Coming up on full screen. I can see Lilo has installed correctly. And I'm just going to hit enter to get it to boot. It looks like the uh, guest editions uh, don't actually take effect uh, until we get a little bit further into the system. And it may well be that uh, I will have to uh, configure them when I get in, but let's see. So Slackware Linux, I'm asked for my username and password. Remember that at this stage, only the root account is configured. So I have to log in initially with root and with the password that I just set. And yes, we can already see the guest editions haven't yet taken effect. But that's fine, we'll sort that out in a minute. Nevertheless, here we have our basic Mate desktop all set up. So let's go straight to Control Center Open our display, set it up to run at 1680 by 1050, apply, and there we go. It's now running at full screen. As you can see, it's really a carbon copy of the live system. However, it does have the advantage that this is now... Um, an installed system which you can keep updated just like any other version of Slackware, although this is the current version rather than the released stable version. However, that's useful in itself um, because it's a little bit newer. But for now, let's move on and open the Mate terminal. So I'm already root. What I want to do is add a normal user. Uh, called OTB for old tech bloke. Usefully, Slackware has a script built in called add user. Login name for new user, OTB for old tech bloke. User ID, we'll just stick with defaults. Initial group users, I'll stick with that. It then asks me if I want to add any additional groups. I can do this very simply by pressing the up arrow on my keyboard and you'll see there's a whole list of additional groups I can add there. I'm going to go with them all, but on top of that, I'm going to add the wheel group. And I'm going to hit enter, leave my home directory as is, leave my shell as bin bash, leave the expiry date at default, and it now tells me that I have set everything up. Uh, the username is OTB. I'm a member of the users group, plus all of those additional groups. My home directory is home OTB, and I'm using the bash shell. And it's never going to expire. Okay, let's hit enter. Do I want to enter my full name? No, I'm not bothered at the moment. My room number, work phone, home phone, other. No, nothing like that. I now need to set a password. So let me type in the password. And that is my normal user configured. So next time that I log into this system, I shall log in as OTB. Now, a lot of people use sudo uh, these days rather than uh, su to switch to root. And you can do the same with Slackware, it's just that it's not automatically configured. Really simple to do, especially if your user is a member of the wheel group. And if you remember, I added my user to the wheel group when I was going through the add user script. In order to configure sudo on this system, the easiest way is to type vi sudo which brings up the sudo as file in vi. I'm just going to scroll all the way down the sudo as file 
until I get to the entry that basically says allow uncomment to allow all members of group wheel to execute any command. So if I uncomment this, this will give me the ability to use sudo as my user OTB. So I've uncommented commented it. I just need to save that now and exit. And that completes the basic setup of Slackware using the live CD. And I think that will do for this episode. Let's talk about what I've done. So that's the installation of uh, Slackware Current from the Slackware Live Marte ISO. Simple, really. You just follow along. Yes, it takes a, a little bit longer than most of the modern distributions, which you can install in about 10 minutes. But other than that, uh, you end up with exactly the same thing, a Marte desktop or whatever desktop you want to install. Next week, I'm going to be looking at how you can add multi-lib capability to a Slackware installation, and also how you maintain the system, especially where you have various repositories installed on the system. With the Marte variant of Slackware, that's certainly the case, because it relies heavily on the Marte Slack Bills repo. And we need to make sure that Slackware itself doesn't remove those packages as we update. Just a quick word though, when I first uh, started out with Linux and first came to Slackware, which I think was about 2005, one of my sons was really interested in learning the GIMP. He was about 10 or 11 years old at the time and I installed Slackware for him uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, one of the main reasons was I didn't want his computer to get viruses and uh, GIMP was pre-installed in Slackware, and he used it for about four or five years. So in terms of simplicity, if a 10 or 11 year old can use it, there's no reason why you couldn't. But next week, we'll go on from this video and look at the next stages. Hope you've enjoyed this, and as usual, stay well YouTube, and I'll see you next week.